Good morning. This is Juan Garcia from Washington. Uh, Admiral Guillory, uh, great to be with you. Thanks for your uh, distinguished service and incredible Navy career. Uh, to the University of North Florida Ospreys, thank you for hosting this important summit. Uh, for Mayor Brown, uh, thank you for your leadership. And as a former resident of Jacksonville uh, who has uh, family currently stationed in Jacks, uh, thank you and, uh, for your community, for the support you've always given our, our Navy and our sailors. And I will tell you as, uh, that he, we here in Washington are counting on the Jaguars to beat the Lions this weekend. Um, as we go into the 11th year of the longest sustained combat operations in American history, I'm convinced that when the dust uh, eventually settles from these two conflicts, one of the key cornerstones of the history that uh, military historians someday write will be the enormous advances made in military medicine. Uh, the numbers speak for themselves. In, Viet in World War II, for every 100 combat injuries, 38 were fatal. By Vietnam, for every 100 combat injuries, 28 were fatal. Today, in the desert, in Afghanistan, for every 100 combat injuries, only six are fatal. We are bringing personnel home alive that in any previous conflict would have come home in flag-draped coffins. Uh, Matt Nathan, Admiral Nathan, Navy Surgeon General, used to say that every day visitors to Bethesda remark on how many more amputees these wars have created. And he points out that it's not that they're more amputees, it's that in previous conflicts, uh, these individuals would have not made it back alive. So that's the great news, the historic news. But the challenge, of course, that comes with that is how do we reintegrate a cadre of wounded warriors, of combat veterans, who are wrestling with a set of injuries that the nation, and for that matter, the world, has never seen before? How do we ensure that IEDs and PTSD and TBI do not become the Agent Orange of this generation? And expert after expert tells us the key to that successful reintegration is, in a word, a job. The sense of self-reliance and independence uh, and worth that comes with work is the key to successful reintegration. Now, I understand that in your summit, um, you've dedicated meaningful time and a special focus on the challenge of reintegrating our, our female veterans. I appreciate that. Thank you for that. You know, we have 300% more women serving in uh, today's military than we did just 30 years ago. Every year, our Navy selects four Sailors of the Year, a active duty sailor and reservist from the West Coast, an active duty sailor and reservist from the East Coast, four completely independent processes to arrive at these four Sailors of the Year. Last year, for the first time in U.S. Naval history, all four Sailors of the Year were female. Uh, our females are serving in, in nearly every community available, both in the Navy and the Marine Corps. You may have felt followed headlines that um, uh, we are two years now into a new policy allowing women for the first time to serve aboard submarines. And that initial cadre of young junior officers are now have now completed the nuclear training pipeline, have reported to their boats, and many have already deployed and they're doing great. The statistics indicate a lag between uh, uh, female veteran hiring and their civilian counterparts that is even greater than the male uh, delta. So thank you for your focus on this challenge. I want to share a story with you uh, uh, about Lieutenant Jay Redmond. Uh, Jay is a, a Navy SEAL. He was injured in Fallujah in the early part of the war in Iraq. He took machine gun fire through the right side of his face. And in the photograph you're seeing, I will tell you that Jay looks a lot better than he did uh, before he went through 11 months of rehabilitation and a string of surgeries. But as he was recovering at uh, Bethesda, Jay was moved one day uh, to take a piece of paper and a Sharpie and scribble the following note and tape it to the door of his uh, hospital room. I'd like to share it with you. Uh, the note reads, Attention to all who enter here. If you're coming into this room with sorrow or to feel sorry for my wounds, go elsewhere. The wounds I received, I got doing a job I love, doing it for people I love, supporting the freedom of a country I deeply love. I am incredibly tough and will make a full recovery. What is full? That's the utmost physically my body has to recover, and then I'll push that about 20% further through the sheer mental tenacity of being a U.S. Navy SEAL. The room you're about to enter is a room of fun, optimism, and intense, rapid regrowth. If you're not prepared for that, go elsewhere. Signed, the management. Uh, Jay's sign has since been signed by the commander-in-chief and it's framed, and if your travels bring you to Bethesda, you'll see it hangs on one of the passageways uh, there in the Navy hospital. 
Um, we've got a lot of Lieutenant J. Redmonds out there. And as we wrap up operations in Iraq and begin to see the light at the end of the tunnel in Afghanistan, ensuring that successful reintegration, I believe, is one of the challenges of our time, of our generation. Earlier this week, the Department of the Navy held our third annual Wounded Warrior Conference in San Diego. And we rolled out a program we called DOORS, the Defense Outplacement Referral Service, which for the first time will allow a, a wounded warrior uh, to, in one stop, the click of a mouse, be able to search across the entire Department of Defense enterprise, uh, looking for positions um, from coast to coast that suit his or her skill set, his or her geographic ref preference, uh, and his or her, her uh, uh, desires for uh, post-rehabilitation service. Uh, accelerated hiring, priority hiring for those available within, uh, to work within 30 days. Our position, the Navy's position, is that if we're going to ask the private sector, we're going to ask corporate America in this challenging economic environment to step up, to reintegrate, to hire these uh, veterans, that we should lead from the front. We should put our money where our mouth is. By the end of this fiscal year, we'll have hired about 11,000 uh, veterans within the Department of the Navy. About close to 60% of all uh, new hires are veterans, and about a third of that are wounded warriors. So for the business leaders of Jacksonville, um, for the private industry representatives uh, taking part in your summit, we're here to ask you um, uh, to help with this, to support this reintegration, and to step up and hire these personnel. Consider bringing them into your organization, not because you're the great patriots that I know you are, uh, not out of any sense of philanthropy, even though you are philanthropists. Not because it's the right thing to do, because, I'm, because I know you do the right thing. We're asking you to hire these folks because it's good for your company, it's good for your business, it's good for your corporation, it's good for your firm, it's good for your store. Uh, these young people, average wounded warrior age is about 20 and a half years old, have been entrusted with an incredible amount of responsibility at an early age. They're disciplined, they're trained, they're savvy, and qualified in the most technologically advanced gear in the world. These are the folks you want to entrust your business with. It's good for your shareholders. It's good for your board of directors. It's good for your bottom line. They won't let you down. Thanks for your support. Thanks for your patriotism. Have a great summit, and we'll see you down in Jacksonville. Appreciate it.